Welcome back to the show, Lamar Burton! Well, good to see you. Well, it's funny, you know. I, uh, I, I got to tell you, it's been a while since you've been on the show, but when you come out, it's a very different reaction. Than, than, we have a lot of celebrities on, and people mm. react very favorably to them, generally. Mm -hmm. But with you, it's just a little extra thing. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's... <laughs> but you almost look surprised. Well, I, you know, Canada's always been a really wonderful place to me. Um, it, it, was, it was published for a long time in Wikipedia that I was actually, I lived in Nova Scotia. Um, <laughs> I don't, um, um, and I think it, it, it may be a combination of, of the Roots thing and, and the Star Trek thing and the Reading Rainbow thing. I think that the, the, yeah. the, the, the combined, it sort of goes to you know, the sweet spot of, uh, of people's lives, and, uh, and I'm grateful. I appreciate it's it. The things that, that people really value. Yeah. Right? Talking about RR Kids, Reading mm. Rainbow Kids. Reading Rainbow. Yeah, tell me about this. Well, what we've done is we've, uh, we've taken the television series and we've done a, a top to bottom reinvention and translated it to tablet computers for kids. Reading Rainbow, the television show, was always about books and video, mm -hmm. connecting kids to literature, but then connecting that literature to the real world through the video field trip. And we thought, aha, this is the direction we should go in. What we're trying to do is get to that child when they're making a decision to be a reader for life or not. And I believe that the most powerful entity in creation is a lifelong learner. If you are literate in at least one language, nobody can pull the wool over your eyes. You have an opportunity to learn at your own speed all of the wonders that exist out there in the world. And so a literate human being is, is, an, is essential, especially going forward. Who is, who, when did you first start hearing this sort of thing? When did, was it your mom that my started, mom. yeah? Yeah, my mom. My mom was a teacher. Um, one of the smartest and most dynamic people I know. My mother's four, ten and a half, just a, a dynamo. Um, I'll be 57 in a couple of days, and I am still afraid of this woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because Irma Jean doesn't play, she has standards. Yeah. And it was, and, and, and she told me, you know, unequivocally, you are going to grow up, you're gonna inherit a world that will probably be hostile to your presence simply because of the color of your skin. And the best thing you can do, the leveler of the playing field for you is a good education. That's a big thing. Okay, so we recognize that racism still exists. Yeah. Not just individually, but systemically. Sure. So when you're raising your kids, yeah. you know it's a different world than the one you grew up in. It is. Are you having the same similar conversation with them? I, I, yes, and ironically, my, and my kids are, are a little older now. My daughter is, is, is in college. My son is, is, is older. The civil rights movement was all about creating a world where they didn't have to think about racism so much. The... The danger in that is that we still live in a world where racism exists, only it's much more subtle, it's much more hidden, it's much more under the radar and behind the scenes. So um, there is still a need to educate kids that the world is a dangerous place and the world can sometimes be, a, you don't want to always have your guard up, but you have to be aware. I was stopped recently by LAPD and it was a situation where I think a lot of past instances uh, were present for me, um, and I was making this guy who was, and I gotta apologize to him where, wherever you are, officer. On that evening, I was wrong. I, I made him responsible for all the times that I was harassed unnecessarily, and I was an ass to the guy, and I, and I hope he finds it in his heart to forgive Did me. Did he have probable cause? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that, that you've actually been a part of that, that changing conversation. I got an interview from you way back in the day. Mm -hmm. Listen to the things that you're saying oh, here. My. Were they trying to stereotype you? Yeah, they do. The they, they always do, no matter who you are. Of course, in my case, after Ruth, they, they brought all kinds of scripts and stories and ideas for me to play an African again. And I said, well, guys, I just did that. I don't want to specifically be relegated to re recreating life through the black experience all the time. I just want to play a human being. Just let me be a person. Just let me be a person. 
That's okay. Now, for, for, that's Barbara McLeod, and mm -hmm. for the record, that's 1982. So that's pre Hollywood Shuffle, when people were really right. dealing with the black experience in movies. And yeah. all. Like, that's a really early experience. The sentiments were absolutely sincere, and it was the 80s. That's, you yeah. know, the, the, you, cannot ha you couldn't have enough gold on <laughs> in, in, in the 80s. Oh, you look good, man. You look good. <laughs> you know? But I suppose. I suppose that is, that is really the genius and the, and the ultimate legacy of Star Trek yes. isn't just the fact that it inspired technology, but right. it was the first world yes. where you went, oh, everybody's equal. Everybody's welcome. Right. Everybody's welcome. That was the genius of Star Trek for me growing up, was Gene Roddenberry. And I was a huge, still am a huge science fiction fan. In Gene's vision, there was a place for me, and that meant a lot. Yeah. I was thinking about the way people react to you. When you first met Gene Roddenberry at being a fan, was it an odd thing? It, it wasn't immediately, um, but what my relationship with Gene ultimately represented for me was um, really coming to terms with the humanity in our heroes. Mm -hmm. Gene was, uh, he was very contradictory in nature. He was, he was this visionary, um, and he loved his booze, and, uh, and nothing pleased him more than seeing a woman in a short skirt. Yeah. So I really had to recognize right. that in addition to being this wonderful visionary, he was still a guy. He was a man. And we've all got faults. We've all got foibles. And the best thing we can do is wake up every morning and, in spite of our mistakes, get up and, and go out there and do it all over again. You've been a part of so many wonderful things. And I think a lot of people have seen your act, but they don't know some of the subtle things you've done in the background. Mm. So somebody wanted to weigh in when they heard that you were coming on the show. I'm, it's 1992, I've just had a terrible accident, and uh, most of the world said I'd never come back. But you reached out and had me play your father on Star Trek, The Next Generation. And I want to thank you for that. That um, goes beyond artistry, that goes to the heart of friend. And you are my friend. Huh? Congratulations. I wish I could be there, but I'll see you soon. <laughs> uh, uh, let me tell you something. I love that man. Um, 1975, I take a cross-country trip from, from uh, Sacramento, California to New York. The whole purpose of the trip for me, get to the Imperial Theater to see Ben Vereen in Pippin. I buy my ticket. I wait at the backstage door for three hours for Mr. Vereen to come down. He finally does. We get a Polaroid picture. Remember Polaroid? Yeah, yeah, we get yeah. a Polaroid picture taken. Shake it, shake it. He signs my program, and I, I shake his hand. I say, Mr. Vereen, my name is LeVar Burton. I'm an actor, and I hope to work with you one day in less than four years we would appear in Roots together. Yeah. That's the power of dreams. Yeah. Right? So you, you believe that, though? I absolutely yeah. believe it. Absolutely believe it. Absolutely. You've embraced Twitter so wonderfully. You've, people, I, when you were tweeting that you were coming to Canada and yeah. we tweeted that you were on the show, everyone was like, let's do a meetup, let's do a meetup. Like, I know. You have this thing. I, the, my first meetup was here in Canada, right. here in Toronto. And it, like, it goes positively for you and it goes negatively for you. Um, the, what have you learned about your that instant access to the people? Um, the instant access, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. It, it absolutely is a double-edged sword. You had the Philip Seymour Hoffman drama, mm -hmm. and, and you, but you got into it for a bit. I did. And then changed. Well, it, it, I apologize, because I really did not. I mean, I said something that was very insensitive. I, I, I made a joke just hours after the announcement was made, and it was wrong of me. Um, and, and I certainly didn't mean to cause his family any additional harm, and, 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 and I'm really, really sorry But you're not the kind that. of guy that just makes that joke. You were trying to make a point as well. Well, um, you know, as much of a disease as it is, um, addiction does begin and end yeah. with a choice. Right. And, um, and, and it is the strength of will that it goes along with, by the grace of God, therefore, I go yeah. every day, one day at a time. You, and you need to surround yourself with that kind of support. When we lose that battle and when, when, a, when a talent like that um, uh, is lost to us, it, my first response is angry. Why? 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 Such a great light. Such a huge waste. Stick around more with LeVar Burton right after this. <laughs> Roots obviously made a massive impact on the culture. When we come back, we'll find out what it all meant to LeVar.
so classic, man. That's been harassed by the cops so many times. Payback, baby. Yeah, being Payback. a cop. Yeah. What yeah, that being f- a cop. Being that, a cop. What's that feel like? Kunta's got you now. <laughs> Dude, you crashed your car? You had a, you had a car with a license plate that said Kunta I on it. I had a car with a, a license plate, uh, Kunta, and, and the car saved my life. I don't have the car anymore, right. and I, I don't have the license plate. Uh, it, it was totaled along with a vehicle. Um, but I, you know what? I embrace Kunta, and I embrace that, that part of my legacy uh, readily. So it's an interesting thing to, to explain to people of a certain generation, hey, do you know that when this show, this series aired, mm. what that meant? Because there are very few TV events now where you're all, it's not like when your mom would watch the Thornburgs. Right. This is, uh, America is learning something that's very important here. Yeah. The world was learning it. The world was learning. I mean, here in the United States, uh, the final episode of Roots, uh, there were uh, roughly 100 million people tuned in. In, in, in North America, and that, you know, that's a sizable yeah. posse. Um, and, and it was all using, the, the, you know, the, the miniseries was at its very beginnings, and it was a way of communicating that we really hadn't experienced before, and it was using that medium in its most powerful way imaginable to enlighten, not just entertain, but to educate, and that's a good thing. And you jump ahead to today, and you look at the Academy Awards, and, the, and the, everybody from Idris Elba to Chuatel mm-hmm. to Michael B. Jordan, right. didn't get the nominee, but still part right. of it. The right. conversation has changed dramatically, dramatically. right? Dramatically, and, and I think that's a, a, a part of progress. Sometimes it feels um, where, where social progress is concerned, like taking two steps forward and a step backwards, and it's really perspective that you need in order to, to really see what's happening. Right. Anthropology time, you ready? Okay. All right. If you could have a LeVar, a LeVar Burton theme song, not the Reading Rainbow theme or Star Trek intro, but a song that captures what it is to be you and it plays every time you enter and or exit a room, which song would it be? See, I'm so glad you gave me that window. The Roots theme was written by Quincy Jones, yeah. and, and that's like... That's it. Uh, come on. Is that, is that your ringtone? Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. It's like, wow. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> You love words. You love words in combination with other words, mm-hmm. right? Let's I do. Let's go to word association. Word association. Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, cucumber soup. <laughs> my, listen, my follow-up is, is, is that what he smells like? Is that what he, like? Patrick Stewart is as cool as cucumber soup. He is, eh? <laughs> His tweets with Gandalf are incredible. Aren't they? Ian he and Sir Ian McKellen, I, it's like, y- if you didn't know better, you'd think they were lovers. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> They just have so much fun together, and I, 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 get a good, I get a big kick out of their friendship. It's an absolute pleasure, as yeah. always, man. So Robert Burton, everybody. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leading Rainbow, available on the iPad and the King of Fire. Robert Burton, we'll be right back.